Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Plan Your Federal Retirement Podcast. I'm your co-host, Micah Shalansky, and with me, we have a an advisor, Christian Sakamoto, joining us yet again on the podcast. So, Christian, excited to have you again, bud. How you been? Hey, great. Really good. And and Happy New Year again. Can't say that enough. It's another exciting year. It always seems like the years go by pretty quick, but if we're intentional about what our goals are and what are the things we're going to be doing into this new year and our resolutions and all that, whatever you want to call it. That's my focus. And that's what I'm going to be working on right in this January month is being intentional with, with my, with my career and also the other, th- other, other goals that we have in life, in life, personal and, and professional. So I want to encourage our listeners to do the same. Fantastic. Love it. You know, Christian, I know one of the things that kind of comes up as we're going through things, as people are looking at retirement, as they're looking at planning, et cetera, is a sick leave question, right? And they're saying, hey, it's the beginning of the year, at least when we're airing this podcast, it's the beginning of the year. And now I'm thinking about retiring at the end of this year or maybe the end of next year, et cetera. And how much should I base my retirement date on my sick leave? What are your thoughts on that? That's a great question. And one of the things that we're looking at when we're working with our federal employees who are thinking about their retirement, when to retire, is let's pick the soonest date for eligibility purposes and, and, and lifestyle purposes that we would want to retire, right? Let's let's get that out of the way first. Let's, what's the soonest date that we would want to retire? And then once we get there, once we have that date, we can maybe tweak it depending on sick leave or maybe even annual leave if we need to. But I would much rather have our our listeners and, and our federal employees really be intentional with what's the you know, what's the soonest date that I would want to retire and then less focused on the actual nuances of, well, if I retire January 1st versus December 31st, you know, all of those little details. But in today's episode, that's what we want to go, go into are those details so that you can can make that tweak to your date if we need to. You know, and that's really important. I love that being intentional about your retirement date, right? So often, this is a mistake that we can all make. We get so fixated on the minutia. We get so fixated on these little details. Hey, I need to make sure I get every penny of benefits out of this. And therefore, I'm going to do A, B, and C. And we're missing the bigger picture, which is retirement. Now, look, don't get me wrong. We want you to get all of the benefits in which you've earned and get those into retirement. But let's not be penny wise and pound foolish about retirement. We pick the retirement date, Christian, and forgive me, I know you've heard me say this a bunch. I'm sure our listeners have as well. I live in Alaska and clients are like, I want to retire on December 31st because it is the best day of the year to retire. Well, we can debate that, but let's just go with that in a concept. Well, fantastic. For all of these reasons, you're going to have as much annual leave as going to be accrued. You're going to have as much sick leave as going to be accrued, all of these other things. And you retire on December 31st. And guess what? On January 2nd, it's dark and cold, right? Is that the (laughs) date that you want to retire at? And and some clients are like, yes, because I'm going to travel. I'm going to do these things, et cetera. But maybe it's not the best date for you. Maybe a March or April date is going to be better. So I like that about the bigger focus first is let's make sure we have a bigger focus in mind and Mm -hmm. then let's back the benefits into it to make sure we're not missing something. Because sometimes things will come up where a client is going to be on the borderline of getting a different benefit set if they worked a few more months. Easy one is between, excuse me, between 60 61 and 62, right? I had a client at one point in time that was, you know, 61 years and uh, she's going to retire at 10 months of federal service. Well, as, as our listeners probably know, because you guys are very savvy, if you make it to 62 while you're still working as a federal employee with 20 years of credible service for retirement, then you get an extra 10% bump in your pension. So you say, whoa, hold the time up breaks. You know, if you mm-hmm. wait two more months, you're going to get a permanent 10% bump in your pension. For her, it made sense to do that. Now, if yeah. somebody's 58, Ooh, I don't know if I tell you to wait an extra four years to get that bump, but a couple months it would. So let's be hyper intentional about what's the retirement focus. Then we start overlaying the benefits and saying, hey, let's maximize the benefits or at least make sure you're not missing out on anything. Yeah, I love it. Well, let's first talk about how we're calculating sick leave into retirement. Essentially, what does that look like if you retire with sick leave hours? I know that's a question that'll come up in client appointments. So let's let's transition and talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that definitely comes up is what's the difference on the sick leave side versus the annual leave side, right? Because those are two different things. Christian, would you walk us through a little bit on the annual leave concept versus the sick leave concept? Then we'll start talking about how it works uh, different for retirement. Sound good? Yeah, absolutely. When you retire and you have annual leave hours, 
that gets paid out to you, you know, the first, you know, couple of weeks after you retire as a lump sum. Your annual leave gets paid out to you as a lump sum when you retire. However, sick leave, instead of it being this annual or this uh, lump sum payment, what they'll do is they'll add up the hours and convert that to days, months, maybe even year or a year of credible service for your retirement, that that'll get added to your pension calculation. That's for sick leave. So that's what we have to be thinking about is as your sick leave accrues is we know that your pension is always going to be based on your years and months of credible service. So we have to be intentional with how the sick leave hours will add to that equation. So for example, if you had, let's say 20 years of credible service and five months, uh, so 20 years and five months of credible service, and you also have sick leave hours that add up to seven months of credible service, they would calculate your pension based on the 20 years and five months of Oh, your, your credible service uh, time working in the government plus the five, the seven months of sick leave so that you would have 21 months as a moving into your pension, how they would calculate your pension. Love that. And Christian, so if, if a, someone is looking at their LES right now, leaving an earnings statement and it says, great, I have a thousand hours of sick leave just for discussion. Well, yeah. okay, there's 20, 80 hours in a year. So do I just automatically cut that in half and say that's six months? Or how do I turn those hours of sick leave into years, months and days? Great question. There's actually a chart for this. So if you were wanting to get a free eye exam, this would be the chart to go and look at uh, because there is a <laughs> lot of different numbers on it. And what it's called is the first sick leave conversion chart or the 2087 chart, because in one year there's 2087 hours. So we have this chart on our website, planyourfederalretirement.com, and we can link that in the show notes description so you can see this conversion. But it's a chart that looks at, all right, Depending on how many sick leave hours we go across and see how many months that is, and we go down to see how many days that is, that would determine based on, let's say, a thousand hours. If you had a thousand hours, then you would have going on the chart and looking at it now, five months and 23 days of credible service. Yes, yeah, so that's really important. So again, we'll go there. You can go to our website, planyourfederalretirement.com slash 69. This is the 69th episode. And then that will link directly to the pod. And we're going to put uh, a chart on there for you guys as well. Free eye exam. I love that comment. But it's going to turn it into that years, months, and days. Now, keep in mind, as, as Christian was talking about, with the sick leave, there's two parts whenever we're calculating your pension. Number one, eligibility for retirement. And number two, your pension computation. Now, OPM calls it an annuity computation. Don't worry, I just think OPM's wrong. So we're gonna call it an, an, a pension uh, because an annuity is something you get from an insurance company and it can be confused with the TSP annuity, other things, et cetera. So we're gonna call your federal benefit always your pension. So whenever we're looking at your pension, we're always looking at those two things, eligibility and computation. And those are not the same thing. So when you're adding this up, you got to add up your years, months, and days of boots on the ground federal service, plus any military time that you've bought back. Those two things count for your eligibility. So if we're meeting our, our standard MRA plus 30, minimum retirement age plus 30 years of federal service. So let's say it was 57. You got to be 57 to be able to retire. You got to have 30 years of federal service. Okay, well, I have three components now, which make up my length of service. I have my boots on the ground time, potentially military buyback time, and then my annual sick leave that comes into place. So with those three things, we got to make sure we know which counts in which category. Only right. boots on the ground time and military time are going to count towards that 30 years that I have to have to be eligible to retire. Now, my sick leave will increase my pension computation. So that mm -hmm. means I'm going to get paid for it, which is fan friggin' fantastic. Uh, but you're not going to be eligible for it. And back, this is kind of a, a throwback uh, in time back to the non foreign area equity retirement assurance act is when this all changed, because there was a set of time as our, our first listeners are going to know when your sick leave did not count for your retirement. And in fact, if you didn't use it, you lost it. And so uh, Christian was really sad during this period in time, because what we found is federal employees would work uh, for 
20, 30 years in federal service in like a year, two years before they would retire, they would get deathly ill. They oh, would no. get sick and they would burn all of their sick leave. Yeah, it was horrible. They burned all of their sick leave. But then as soon as they retired, miraculously, they were cured. First flu was gone. Of course, that was oh. a joke. Kind of true. <laughs> uh, but, um, but you know, in, in the non-foreign area, Equity Retirement Insurance Act in that period in time, that's when all of those rules changed. And in that time, now our sick leave counts towards your pension, which is fantastic. Just understand the difference in those rules so you don't get caught up thinking, oh, my sick leave makes me eligible for retirement because it does not. Yeah, super important distinction because going back to our first point, when we're planning the date that you want to retire, the year, month, and date, we have to figure out first for eligibility purposes, what's going to make the most sense? When when would be the soonest that it would make the most sense? So, if, if, so for example, if we want to keep our health insurance in a retirement, we have to know what are those thresholds? Is it MRA with 30 years of uh, credible service? Is it age 60 with 20? Is it age 62 with five? Maybe it's an MRA plus 10 retirement. We're going to postpone, right? There's a lot of little details here that we have to first figure out from eligibility. And so to Micah's point, the sick leave gets added to your pension but not for eligibility purposes. We still have to meet those requirements uh, with boots on the ground time and bought back military time, not for our sick leave hours that are added later to the calculation of your pension. You got it. Now, one oddity, because keep in mind, there's a virtually an exception for every rule, right? You just got to know where they are. The only thing that sick leave will help you be eligible for is the uh is the 62 and 20 bonus retirement if as we were talking about earlier right if you make it to 62 plus 20 years of federal service you were eligible for that increased 10 percent bonus super cool factoid that let's say you only had 19 and a half years of federal service between boots on the ground and military time but you had six months of sick leave are you and you're 62 and retiring that six month of sick leave does make you eligible for that 62 and 20 bonus, which is fantastic. Uh, we, there's a special letter out from OPM that talks about that and how that works. And that's kind of the only time that I'm aware of that sick leave help makes you eligible for something. So it's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Christian, one of the questions that we get all the time is, you know, should we burn our annual leave? Should we burn our sick leave? Like what makes the most sense to do? Uh, in, in, in a client, it, this has come out from like a genuine client question it says, Hey, look, I got to take time off for surgery. Should I use my annual leave or should I use my sick leave? Right. So it's a qualified time that they're taking off and they could choose to use it for each one. Which one is worth more? Well, your annual leave, Christian, as you pointed out, you're going to get a lump sum paycheck for, right? So you're going to get paid for all of that amount. So if you use your leave and it extends your retirement, well, you're getting the best of both worlds because not only are you getting a paycheck, but it's extending your length of federal service. Service, which is going to increase your pension. So that's the way that I like to look at both of these. If I have an opportunity to burn my sick leave because it will increase my length of uh, federal service, that makes a lot of sense to do because now I get the best of both worlds. Now I get to increase my length of service, which increases my pension, plus you're burning that sick leave and you're getting paid for it. If you just retire, and you turn your sick leave in, which will happen automatically. Well, it increases your pension, which is great, but you don't get paid for it, right? So you get one of the two benefits on the sick and uh, the annual leave side. You get paid for it. So you get a lump sum check, which is fantastic, but it does not increase your pension. So yeah. you're giving up something on each one of these. So what is my ideal? As long as everything lines up in a super legit, well, then fantastic. Use one of those to increase your length of federal service. And now you're getting the best of both worlds. The only other caveat that I like to put on that one is the, the benefit that you could have with annual leave, depending on your savings, depending on where you're at. It's going to take OPM months to process your retirement. In fact, we had one client retire the beginning, the end of last year, 1231, 2021, December, like a week before Christmas is when he got his of 2022 is when he, he, he got his OPM adjudication paperwork that says, good news, your, your pension is adjudicated. That means finalized. Uh, bad news is they did it wrong. So now we're going back to OPM to fix the issues. So he had to wait 12 months before his pension was finalized. He had to wait about five or six months before we started getting his interim pay. Now we need to go back and change some things with his pension. Why do I bring this up? This goes back to one of our previous episodes where we talked about cash flow. Cash flow is so important. How long is it going to take from when you retire to when OPM is going to start sending you a retirement check? 
What's your savings look like? That could be a really good reason you want to bank up your annual leave so you can have that lump sum pot of money so you can help bridge that gap. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Wow. That's, that's incredible. 12 months just to do it wrong. Not good. Yep. Yep. So that'll be something I said. I said, all right, great news. And he's like, what do you mean? Great news. It's like great news. We found it within the window. We're going to go to them and we're going to communicate with this. And there's there's a couple things that are wrong with it. We're going to be able to fix a couple of them. The other one's a bit of a long shot, but but we're going to work to the best we can. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, good. We're helping them. All right. So, Christian, this is really the importance of sick leave, right? Understanding how it adds to your federal benefits, where right. to use it, where not to use it, etc. cetera. Um, the only other thing I like to throw in here in sick leave is this is definitely a mental health thing as well. And not to throw that out lightly, but sometimes I have clients that don't want to burn any additional leave period regardless of their state. And you know what? Sometimes you got to look at this and say, why do we have sick leave, right? We have sick leave in order to take those sick days, in order to get that recovery time. Maybe it's most important to do that. I also kind of think of this as this is almost like a short-term disability buffer that you have right here is God forbid if something happens to you, this is your kind of bank in reserve. So I do like clients to, to use it. I also like them to save it if they don't need it, right? So use it intentionally, be, be hyper-focused in what that intent is. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, one of the things I'm thinking about, too, with sick leave is when it's calculated, we talked about when we look at the chart, figuring out, well, how many months and, and days does it actually add up? But looking at it from, let's say you reached. So so when we're doing the calculation for your pension, we add up the time that you're working boots on the ground, plus any bought back military time, plus any time for sick leave. And this is where for our listeners who really want to be intentional with when to retire, what's the, I guess the best day to look at it. We have to look at it from the days. If they don't equal one month, they get rounded down. So if we added up your time boots on the ground, let's say it was 20 months and, and to use my example earlier, 20, 20 years and five months. And then we added up all the, the, months and days of sick leave and that added to be seven months if you had those two added together be 21 years but then if you had like a few more days of that because of sick leave well just know it's going to be the 20 years and zero months it wouldn't be added or rounded up to you know 21 years and one month so it it gets rounded down is the only point that i wanted to Mm -hmm. make there christian that's a great point uh, I'm so glad you brought it up because that is definitely a mistake that we see federal employees make is they want to get the most out of every single thing in their pension and they miscalculate how sick leave is calculated in there. They miss it by a day and all of a sudden they lose an entire month because if you go to retire with yep. 32 years, 11 months and 30 days and you think it's spot on, but it's actually 29 days and not 30, you don't get yep. the month credit. You go back and lose that entire month. So I like to tell clients. Don't be greedy with this, right? I would rather leave a little bit of hours on the table to make sure you get a full month than try to calculate it down to the penny. In fact, we will not calculate this right now. We're always going to leave a cushion because we want to make sure you get the most in retirement. And it's just not worth the risk, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that too. So I I, I 100% agree. Well, Christian, this podcast is all about action items for our listeners to be able to take and implement stuff this week to help improve them and improve where they're at with planning their retirement. So what do you think a good action item for to kick off our listeners is? First thing, going back to the retirement date is really knowing what your retirement date is going to be. And here we are in January, and it's a good time to be thinking about our goals for the year. It's a good time to be thinking about our retirement date date. And then once we have that date, we can factor in how sick leave will increase the pension. But as we talked about before, it's not going to count towards eligibility. So action item, again, figuring out when is that date that we want to retire. And then again, looking at for sick leave, how is that going to add to the pension? I love it. You know, as uh, one of the things I want to be really intentional about stating, we've been saying it being intentional a lot. So I want to be intentional in our podcast. We have a goal to help over 1 million federal employees plan their retirement. And we can't do that without you. 
So you're going to hear me say this a lot this year, but we really appreciate you listening. We appreciate your feedback. We have that listener survey. Please make sure you took that as well. We want to get your feedback. We also want you to share this information, get it out there, help people plan the retirement. The more federal employees that are armed with great information, the more successful they are going to be planning their retirement. And that's on your shoulders. That's on your ability to help these people. So thank you so much. The other thing I would say is come up with a plan on how you're going to leave your sick leave, right? And I like to have things written down because if I just leave them in my mind, they're slowly going to change over time. So write it down. How are things going to, how is your plan to use your annual leave? What's your plan to use your sick leave? How much do you want to use every single year? How much do you want to carry forward? Then let's be intentional about spending that time with family, taking those vacations, using that sick leave as appropriate if you guys need to, but know what these numbers are. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to another great episode. Christian, I really appreciate you having, be, you being on the podcast and helping this out. So thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. Well, until next time, everybody, happy planning. Happy planning.